Today we are continuing on the series with the brand new Shaper Box 3 plugin. We're going to go a bit more in depth in the Liquid Shaper today. This is the one and only new shaper they have in Shaper Box 3 that was not previously in Shaper Box 2, bringing it to a total of nine different shapers. Liquid Shaper is an LFO based phaser and flanger. I'll be going over some tips and how to use some of the features in there, as well as how I like to use Liquid Shaper. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so here's what the original loop sounds like before adding Shaper Box 3. So those are the tracks so far. Some of them do have Shipper Box 3 already as well, but it's all of the old stuff like that, like the drive and panning, stuff like that, a little more mixing things. But now we can start using some of the new tools in Shipper Box 3. I probably should have named all the tracks, but I kind of forgot. Don't worry about it. This is the, the bass instrument right here. So I made this beat like during Halloween, if you can't tell it's like very dark. This just sounded like something you'd hear like a horror film. So after that one, I added a little bit more distortion from Shaper Box 3, but now it is time to add the brand new Liquid Shaper to this track. Alright, so just starting off here inside of the Liquid Shaper, it looks pretty simple. And it already sounds way different. So the first thing I want to go over here is actually going to be the two different types. We've got a phalanger and a phaser. Personally, I mentioned this in the uh, video before this one, I actually do prefer phasers over flangers. It has a lot more depth to it, obviously, and it's almost like a metallic feeling. And now going from the flanger over to the phaser, if I want to be really nitpicky, I can actually put it onto right here, that way it'll change on the, uh, the note change. Actually, this sound kind of cool. <laughs> you can also hear in the reverse, like right over here. And this definitely fits like the uh, the more like spooky sound that I was going for, a very dark tone like this one, right? But that is not where this ends right here. We have different stages over here as well, where we can go into eight, four, 12, and 16. I actually think 16 sounds pretty cool. Now, one thing I've been noticing in my time is actually going to be uh, the shorter the line right here, the worse the higher number sounds. The, the rate it's going is way too fast for me, but then when it's longer, like over here, it sounds better, I think. But a 12 right here is a good like medium between the both of them. So up until this point, we've been playing with the LFO for the phaser, but there's actually a second tab to the shaper. Pressing this button right here will bring up the feedback tab. Feedback changes the intensity of the effect, which differs from the mix levels, which only blend the wet and dry signals. How much of the effect we hear compared to the dry signal. And like the last tab, it is still LFO driven, so you can get some really unique variety for your tracks by shaping the LFO in any way that you please. And then it's gonna get a lot more intense. All right. If I lower the mix over here, it still sounds like that, but I can still increase the feedback and then decrease the mix. It doesn't change the sound or effect that we're getting from the uh, the feedback over here. Personally, I like it a little bit more somewhere in the middle, a little bit higher than 50%, like 62, 75, something around there. I do like this one over here, but I'm gonna put that back over to 50 right there. And then we've got another knob over here for stereo. All right, so this one is at 0% right now. We can make it more mono going down over here which for this kind of sound might be the case, uh, or we can go and increase the stereo. That does sound pretty cool. It sounds like a spaceship almost. And if you look over to the right over here, we have the envelope tab where we can change the amount as well. Having the sound that the Shaper Box 3 track is on will actually manipulate how it's gonna go through. Okay, so we can go increase this one. Really changing the shape of the sound, which is really cool to go through over here. For the case of this demo, I'm going to leave the envelope turned off, though. Let's go back to the flange and see how that sounds now. Alright, once again, I just like phasers more. That's just me personally. They are two different things. I'm not saying that one's better than the other. I just prefer phasers more. And like always, you can choose different sections here for which frequencies you're going to be manipulating. And you can get some pretty unique sounds like that as well. So over here, we've got the mid where all of everything we just did is in there. We can go over to high and get something completely different by going up here maybe. Once again, even change the mix and the feedback. Even maybe a little bit lower on this one. Stereo, make that a little bit higher again. The low one over here, get rid of the, uh, the stereo. Maybe a little bit more feedback. Okay, I also did forget to mention that I do have already an EQ on there. I actually meant to take that off in the beginning of this recording, but I completely forgot. This is actually a bass sound that I have inside of Keyscape, but I didn't want it to be the bass instrument in this beat. I just wanted the tone, so I cut out all the low end, but here's what the original sound sounds like. Which, uh, yeah, definitely take into a live effect here with that phaser as well. 
All right, but once again, I don't want the clash with my other instruments, so I'll be turning back on the EQ now. So I strongly encourage you here to change some of the stages and experiment with brand new LFO patterns. And I like to split that up into two different types right here. The first one is what I like to call tone-based LFOs, where basically it's what we've been doing this entire time, creating a very simple linear LFO to get some small changes here. And personally, that's what I use the most. But you could always put in a little bit more work here and get more experimental by doing more rhythm-based LFOs. So once again, experiment with that and see how that goes for you. But I've also been using the Liquid Shaper in a way that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. The flanger duplicates the input signal and applies a very short delay effect, which I think pairs really well with hi-hats. I already do have Shaper Box 3 over here with a couple different things right there. And that uh, Crush Filter can also uh, add some low end, so I cut that out once again over here. But that is not what I wanted to show you guys. I can go over here and get the Liquid Shaper once again, and we can lower this completely. That is what I want to show you guys. It's very unique and it really is a lot of fun to use. So how can we do that in a practical way? All right, first thing is first, we've got to find out how low this line has to be in order to get that uh, delay effect. Kind of sort of there. Not really there anymore. So let's try doing something more like, uh, try and get something in the middle. So let's try doing something more like that. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's already adding a lot of flavor to it. I didn't like the way that this ended over here. We can actually probably change the feedback for that as well. So if I can go over here, and uh, I want that to stay the same right there at 50%, but then I want it gone completely after that. Okay, so yeah, it does work like that. Okay, so that is a great way to get the effect without having to go on through the entire loop. The one thing I will say here is that's adding frequencies here that might be clashing against your, uh, your melody or anything like that. So just be careful when adding something like this. Let's hear that with the full drum loop right now. So that was with the liquid shaper on the very end of this chain over here. I made this chain because I want to show you guys that when you do this liquid shaper with the phalanger effects, everything like that, volumes will be changing quite a bit here. So that's what everything sounds like without a compressor, without the crush on, just the liquid shaper. Okay, so the volumes are actually changing quite a bit here. The crush shaper is just so I can actually just get some more rhythm in there. Uh, what really changed everything here is adding a compressor. The compressor at the end of this chain is going to help it so that's not gonna be any peaks or too, dipping down too low in the volume, getting a more consistent line all the way through. And once again, after all of that one, I did have an EQ over here to cut out the low end because the crusher and the flanger could add some low end in there, which leads us to the last part of our chain right here, which is going to be the compressor. Okay. And that's where I'm going to leave off this video. Originally, I was going to make this into one video about everything that was new in Shaper Box 3, but it was a little bit more lengthy and I didn't want to cut down too much so I can give you guys as much info as possible. So I split it up into two different videos. So those are all my thoughts that I had on the new Liquid Shaper and how I use it. But be sure to stick around for the next video where we go over the brand new compressor tool and the audio tricking capabilities that Shaper Box 3 has included. So after all that, thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.